welcome to the first video of Mermaid Basics. So for this video, we are going to be talking about the dolphin kick. Now, what is the dolphin kick? Well, if you've seen any professional recreational freedivers, swimmers, um, professional or recreational mermaids, or anybody at the pool doing this for fitness or fun, or if you've seen any little girls or boys pretending they're mermaids or fish in the pool, then you've probably seen the dolphin kick. Because you see people with their legs, and what they do is they glue them together, and they continue to kick in a wave-like motion. And if you haven't seen anybody do this on like a multimedia or in person, then you've probably seen a dolphin. Whether it's at an aquarium, or in real life, or you've seen it on TV, or YouTube, or an ocean conservation thing, then you've probably seen that motion that is used in the dolphin kick. Now what humans try to do in the dolphin kick is they are implementing the motion of the dolphin and how a dolphin moves and recreating it for our bodies to move in that manner. So pretty much how a dolphin moves is they move in that wave like motion from the tip of their nose all the way to their tip of their tail. And they continue that wave like motion while they swim. That is the same thing we're trying to do when we're doing the dolphin kick. We are using our ab strength and our hip strength as well and we're going for keeping that wave like motion from our nose all the way to the tip of our toes and we're keep continuously keeping our feet pointed so that we can continue that wave like motion throughout while we swim. Now how do you do the dolphin kick? For anybody who's new or starting out swimming or who wants to just learn this basic kick there are many things that you can do to learn this you can either watch a bunch of videos you can go practice in the pool which is highly recommended that you do because you gotta go to a pool to learn this or you can get a friend and they can come and help you learn this but I find that there are usually two ways that people learn this either through trial and error or they break it down step by step now for this video I'm going to be talking about step by step but as a WSI person who teaches swim lessons at my local pool I usually like to break it down step by step because I like to make it like easy to move on after somebody has acquired that skill and has learned how to do it and can do it then I add something else to it then I add another thing and another thing until they're able to actually do it very proficiently. And they I feel like they feel more confident about themselves by getting little goals like saying, oh, kick off the lawn and streamline. And then, oh, try to do a wave like motion. And continuously make those little tiny little challenges for people. Now, also the trial and error part is a nice thing as well. I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm not saying don't do it. But there's different learning styles, and as someone who is like trying to acquire a marine biology degree right now, trial and error is pretty much fundamentals of how humans learn. So I believe that either method that you choose, whatever method, just make sure that it works for you. You want to feel comfortable in the water as well as safe, and you want to make sure that you're taking proper precautions so that you stay safe while doing this as well. Now to start off through the step-by-step -step process, I like to start off by doing a streamline, which means that I'm pushing off the wall. My hands are like this, clasp on top of them, and I like to push off the wall and just continue doing that. And then after I'm able to continuously push off the wall and continue a straight line under the water, so here's the surface and I'm staying under the surface while continuing that nice line. I try to add in the dolphin kick movement, which how you do that is pretty simple. You're going to have your hand over the top of the other one, and when you're in the water, you're actually going to just move your hands just like this. And hopefully when you're moving their, your hands just like that, your body is going to follow that motion that your hands are creating. So you're going to be in that motion, you're going to start moving your arms, you're going to kind of like do a worm while you're going underwater. But when you get to your hips, that is where the power of the dolphin kick comes into play. That is where all your power is coming from, which is your hips and your abs as well. So what you want to do is you want to make sure when you're getting to your hips and your abs that you are doing a really strong pull up and kick. 
Now you don't really need to like stick your butt up all the time, but you need to make sure that you are continuously moving and that is where all your power is coming from. That is where you're going to feel your workout if you're doing this for fitness. That is also where you're going to be the sorest is your hips and your abs when you're doing the dolphin kick. So now you're able to do the dolphin kick while kicking off the side of the wall. Now the next step is to do the dolphin kick without kicking off the side of the wall. And what you want to do is you want to create your own momentum while doing the dolphin kick. And you want to make sure the power is coming from your hips and your abs. And when you're doing that motion, you can start in the middle of the pool. I like to start kind of like by the wall, but not able where I can touch the wall. Just close by. So if I need to go back and try to do the streamline again because I'm not getting it, I will go. After you're able to master the dolphin kick while kicking without wall assistance, there are multiple things that you can do. I personally went from doing like the dolphin kick by itself to using it as a stroke. Now, when I was starting off, I couldn't do the butterfly very proficiently. So what I did is I took my favorite stroke and I switched it up a little bit. Now you can take your favorite stroke either freestyle or front call and, or you can take the breast stroke and you can change up the leg kick. What I did is what I took the breast stroke, which I'll show in a video, where I took the breast stroke and I kept the same arms that I'm doing for the breast stroke. But instead of doing that frog kick, I switched it to the dolphin kick and I tried to get that timing down where I was able to implement the dolphin kick into my breast stroke. Now, if you like the freestyle or front crawl, whichever one, they're known as both. I see like both names used a lot. You can do the same thing. Instead of that flutter kick that you do while you're doing front crawl, try switching it to a dolphin kick while you're doing the front crawl. It's a really nice challenge, especially if you're doing this for fitness or you want to try working different muscles while you're doing different strokes. That is a good way. Now, after you're able to successfully do either the front crawl with the, with the um, dolphin kick or you can do the breaststroke with the dolphin kick, you can either move on to doing monofin training or you can try to do the butterfly. Now, the butterfly is the one stroke that uses the dolphin kick. You need to be able to be very proficient in the dolphin kick to successfully complete this stroke. Also, you need really strong arms. Because I had trouble because my arms would not get to this point before they hit the water. They stopped right about here and I would continuously do this. And you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to bring your arms all the way up in front of you. Move it down and push it back up. Head down. Chin needs to be really close to your chest. And then you come back up. Same kind of arms. Now with the butterfly, there's like multiple different ways that people can do it. I've seen people do it with a single kick for when they're doing their dolphin kick, where they kick, come up, breathe, kick, do another stroke, and then kick and come up and breathe. I've seen that. And I've also seen people do it with two kicks. So they kick, kick, come up, breathe, go down, kick, kick, come up and breathe, or kick, kick, come up and breathe, and then kick, kick down. Whichever one you feel comfortable. I preferably like to do the double kick because I feel like it brings me like out of the water and I can actually do more of a slant than doing a full like more slant because you want to make sure that your body is kind of like this in the water. I usually keep my chin down a little bit and I have about that much room to breathe so I usually like blow out when I'm coming up and then I can take a big breath in go back down I can and then when I come up to breathe again I blow out as much water in front of me as possible so I can take a big breath and I continue to do that stroke. So say you want to go into monofin training, which is what you see free divers and mermaids or professional mermaids or recreational mermaids or little girls or little boys doing at pools. I've seen lots of little girls try this. I've seen one little boy do it and he did a really good job. But mostly I'll see like free professional free divers or recreation divers who want to try this as well. And I'll probably go into another video on choosing a monofin. I'll go over like different monofins, how they're used, how what environments you should consider before buying a monofin, and all that fun stuff in another video. But for this video, what a monofin does is it empowers your kick. It makes your kick stronger and it bring 
pretty much forces you a little faster as well when you're kicking. And it also creates more of a workout. For example, if you want a nice workout, just get a monofin and do the dolphin kick underwater and you will feel your abs hurting afterwards. Trust me, it is a nice workout. You'll see great improvements and improves lots of things as well as your strokes. The dolphin kick is a really nice stroke to learn whether you're doing a recreation or you're doing it as a professional. Either way, it is a really nice stroke to learn. It's great for fitness. Um, if you've ever seen the free divers, one great fact about that is the reason why they do the dolphin kick while they're going underwater is because that conserves more oxygen. If you use your body as one unit instead of two separate ones like you do with the flutter kick, you're going to conserve more oxygen. You're going to be able to stay under a little bit longer than if you were just doing a flutter kick, which is a really nice thing, especially if you're practicing breath holds or you're trying to improve your breath hold. I really hope this video is helping people understand the dolphin kick a little more, understand why we do the dolphin kick and why freedivers do the dolphin kick because it conserves oxygen and it's a really nice kick to do for fitness. Also, it is a kick that people use for like if you're trying to do a professional mermaid or you want to be recreational mermaid or you want to do freediving or you just want to have fun and get a nice workout. This is a beautiful, nice kick just for you. So I wish everybody the best of luck in trying this stroke or improving their stroke if they've done this stroke before. I hope that you achieve your goals with this stroke. It is a nice stroke. I really like this stroke out of all the different kicks that you can do. I really like the dolphin kick.